Good morning. Welcome to Ask Coffee Online. My name is Chef Caesar, and today I'm going to be cooking a coq au vin. This is a very classic French dish, and coq means uh, rooster in, in French, but you know, if you can't find a rooster to make your dish, you can use a young chicken, it just works as well. And you only use a very few ingredients, very classic in French cooking. I have some onions here that we blanch, uh, some of chicken, of course, some mushrooms. If you can find a little small, tiny mushrooms, it's better. But that way you can leave them whole, but otherwise you can find the little bigger ones and then cut them in half. They work great too. I got some, also some uh, salt pork. This is pretty look at that pork back or uh, pork belly. If you can't find this, uh, just uh, you can use a thick piece of uh, cut of bacon. It works well. So we're going to start by, you know, blanching, uh, cutting some of this uh, pork belly into little batonets. And we're going to blanch it like I did here. Start in cold water and then uh, let it go until it starts to like simmer. Then we're going to take it out. This is going to remove some of the impurities that you see, a little foam here. So once uh, it comes to a, a boil, you're going to take it off. Make sure you start with uh, cold water star. So we're going to remove this from the pan. As you can see, a lot of impurities go to the top, and we want to kind of remove some of those when we do the blanching. Then we're going to fry this. We're going to fry our bacon to kind of render some of the fat. So this is going to be, I'm going to discard this liquid. And I'm going to start my pan here. I'm using some, uh, also I'm going to dry it off a little bit before I put it in the pan because otherwise it's going to start to, you know, splatter everywhere because of the water. So I got a little paper towels. I'm using some uh, olive oil here. Okay, so I'm going to put about an ounce to kind of fry the bacon. Okay. And this is a very simple dish to make. It's been very, I mean, this is an ancient dish. It's been around for many, many, you know, years. And uh, it's, uh, it's got a connection to ancient Rome, so, but they, the French kind of took it and made it their own. And, uh, and as you can see, it's very few ingredients, but you can make a very nice and tasty dish. So we're gonna start by throwing our bacon in there. Or salt pork, I should say. And we want to brown it. Okay. There go. In the meantime, I'm going to season the chicken. I'm only doing a half a recipe. The recipe calls for a whole chicken. I'm only doing half right now. And you're gonna get uh, the recipe along with the video as well, so you guys can uh, do this at home. Okay. There you go. All right, let's keep an eye on it. This, is gonna, this smells wonderful. Some of the fat is starting to render. It's gonna give a great uh, taste of your dish too. So you can see some of the fat here. Most of this is mostly meat. So it's got very little fat. It just depends what kind of piece you buy, but you know, this food has a lot of meat and a little less fat, but it works just good. And you can serve this dish with just vegetables. So then I'm gonna be making some uh, classic mashed potatoes, something simple. and. It, once I get the chicken going, I'm gonna kinda, in the meantime, I'm gonna make my mashed potatoes, but let's get it going with this dish first. I'm using about six ounces of, uh, you know, pork, uh, salt pork, because like I said, I'm, calling, I'm cutting down in the recipe, I'm doing half of it. And if you're gonna do a whole chicken, you wanna use a bigger pan, because you wanna make sure everything fits there perfectly fine. This is going to take a little bit to brown the bacon. And the sauce for this dish is basically red wine. I'm using uh, some burgundy here. You can use a uh, cab or uh, even a merlot, something dry, some chicken stock. I'm going to be, this is going to be making the sauce. I'm going to do a little roux to thicken the sauce. I also got my little sachet of spice. I got some fresh thyme. If you don't have fresh, you can use some dry. I got some uh, crushed garlic in here, fresh, and also I got some uh, one bay leaf in there. Okay, I'm 
I'm gonna let it brown a little more. As you can see, I got a lot more fat in there from uh, the fat from the uh, pork render right now, and now it's gonna be, when I brown the chicken, it's gonna give it some real nice uh, flavor. This is very basic cooking, as you can see. You know, we're not doing anything extravagant, but you know, all the flavors that you get from this dish are, are really nice. And you know, you don't need to use a lot of ingredients. You just have to know, you know, how to put them together. Okay. I'm gonna let it brown a little more. It's nice and crisp. This room smells great from this uh, pork being cooked. It's like bacon. Oh boy, who doesn't like bacon, right? Okay. Be careful not to burn the bacon because otherwise it's going to taste bitter. You just want to get a nice. Uh, crispy color on it. And you can feel it when it's getting crispy. It's just pressing down with a spoon. And just by looking at it too, it's getting nice and golden. Okay, I'm gonna remove my bacon from the pan so I can start cooking it. It's a slider spoon so you take some of this, drain some of the fat off and leave it in the pan they we're going to be using to are like brown or our chicken. Okay, now I'm going to put it to the side. Now I'm going to start brown and chicken. I already got my chicken nice and seasoned here. You want to brown it really well on all sides. I took the bone off the breast so it cooks quicker. So you can leave it on. If you guys want to put like a little cover up on the pan, just do it like halfway. Sometimes you guys kind of ask the questions why the splatter walk is a little uh, moisture in there. But if you want to cover a little bit, you don't want to cover completely because otherwise you're going to be steaming the chicken and it's going to be boiling. So you want to kind of keep it really nice and hot so it gets nice and crispy. We're just browning the chicken right now. We're not going to be cooking it all the way because we're going to cook it in the sauce. That's how it's going to get a nice, you know, red color from the sauce. It's going to be the wine we're going to be using. And also keep in mind, if you're going to do a whole chicken, try to to brown half at a time. Don't put all the pieces in there because when you do that, the heat in the pan comes down and then you start searing the chicken, you're gonna start to like boil. So you don't wanna do that. Make sure you like do maybe four or half a chicken at a time. That way the pan stays nice and hot and you end up with a nice crispy skin. Okay, now I'm gonna flip it over. And this is small chicken, so it's gonna cook much quicker. So you can see the pieces are kind of small. I got the smallest one I could get. Very young chicken, so that way it doesn't take too long to cook. You can also finish it off in the oven. Once you have the sauce with the, you put the wine in the pan, if you don't want to, you know, keep cooking it on the stove top, you can stick it in the oven with the cover and then kind of for about 20 minutes, then you want to take it off and finish it off that way. But I'm gonna cook it all the way on the stove top since I don't have an oven with me right now. Oh, be careful because sometimes it splashes, you don't want to burn yourself. Okay, I'm going to take this.
I'm gonna take it off right now. Then I'm gonna fry my mushrooms and my onions that I got over here. Okay. I'm just gonna saute some of these mushrooms in here. Can, like I said before, if you can find little tiny ones, you don't have to cut them in half. If you don't, just cut them in half. And I couldn't find the little ones, that's why I've got these big ones here. I'm also going to throw some of my onions here. Before you uh, cook the onions, you want to blanch them for about 3-4 minutes. And then uh, that way they're nice and soft. And uh, that way you don't put them in raw. Otherwise you're going to be kind of hard when you, when you eat them. So you want to blanch them and kind of, you know, cool them off in the water right away. So, cook them. so I did it ahead of time. There you go. You want to brown this real nice. This room smells really nice with the onions, the tomato, I mean the mushrooms and the bacon, wow. That's why I say it's a very nice tasty dish. I'm also going to add a little salt to my vegetables here. Now they're nice and brown, I'm going to take them off and then I'm going to start cooking the chicken. But before you add the chicken, you want to drain all this fat in here. You don't want to have so much uh, oil on your sauce. So we're going to drain this. Got a little fish right here. Okay. Look at that. Now I'll turn it back on. I'm going to put this to the side here. Kind of clean. Now we're going to put the chicken stock back in there. And my red wine. Okay. We're also going to add the chicken back in there. Finish cooking the chicken. Okay. down a little bit we gotta clean as we go you know how we say that I'm gonna add my little sachet of spices here since it comes to boil I'm gonna cover this so it cooks you know and I about 10-15 minutes in the meantime I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn my potatoes back on here because I'm gonna be doing some mashed potatoes and uh, they're almost done there to serve with my chicken. You can use any other uh, starch you like with this. It goes well with pretty much any kind of potato dish or even some rice, but 
I'm doing some just simple mashed potatoes today. Okay, now I got this, uh, it's gonna come to a boil. I'm gonna let it cook. The chicken is gonna get a nice, you know, deep red color from the wine. It's gonna be a little bit here. Also, I got some soft butter I took out of the refrigerator because I'm going to be making a little roux with some flour then to thicken up my sauce and make sure it's nice and soft, like you see. That way you can mix it in really good with the flour. And this goes right in. Once we have uh, the chicken cooked and uh, we're ready to plate our dish, we're going to be, you know, thickening the sauce a little bit with the, the flour and butter combination. This is a very tasty dish. I mean, I don't know if you guys ever, you know, tried to do this at home, but it's, it's very simple. As you can see, it only takes a very few ingredients, some herbs and, you know, liquids like the wine and chicken stock and to make a very nice, uh, tasty dish. So. Drop my potatoes over there. If you guys want, you can cover this chicken with a lid so it starts to, you know, heat up a little more. The steam builds up and it, and it cooks much quicker. But you also want to reduce the sauce so, you know, you can leave the lid off. That way some of the liquid evaporates because we want to reduce it down so we have a uh, more you know, stronger flavor, more intense. But it's gonna cook quick, cause like, like I said, this is a stronger chicken, it's not as big, and you know, it's gonna go quick. So we wanna skim the top. Mm -hmm. yeah. Skim the top a little bit here. Boy, this smells wonderful. I'm taking some off, some fat off the top here, so I don't have a lot of fat in the sauce. Because since I have the skin on the chicken, some of the fat's rendering is going to come to the top. So you want to kind of do this. Make sure you're cooking the chicken. That way then we don't end up with a really greasy sauce because we're gonna add some butter to it. You know, it's gonna be nice and rich at the end. As you can see, cooking doesn't have to be very complicated, you know. A few ingredients, you know, just knowing to put them together the correct way and you're gonna end up with a wonderful tasting dish, as you will see here. I hope you guys, you know, get to try this at home. We have a question. Yes, go ahead. What brand of induction? Oh, you know what? This is a Burton brand. The question was, what kind of, what brand of induction we using? This is a, a Max Burton. And they work really good. I mean, they, we had them for a while. They haven't had any problems with them. And make sure when you uh, buy one of these, you buy the magnetic pans. Because sometimes, if you don't have the right pan, it's not going to work. It's got to have, you know, the, when you go chopping, tell them. And uh, take a magnet, make sure it sticks to the pan. Otherwise, if it doesn't have any magnet, this, it's not going to work. We had a little incident with Chef Susie one time. She was using this, and she realized that she needed a special pan to make crepes, and uh, it wouldn't work. So make sure you guys don't buy something, then you go home, and you have to go back and, and take it back. But, yes. You can see a little foam building on top. Mm 
Okay, I'm gonna cover my pan a little bit here. So it kind of steam builds up and it gets nice and hot in there. In the meantime, I'm gonna see if my mashed potatoes or my potatoes are cooked to make some mashed potatoes to go with my dish. I'm gonna turn them on a little bit more. They still got a couple more minutes. Pretty much, I think I'm gonna time it really good. I also got some little some green beans. I'm gonna, you know, add to my uh, plate there. I got some regular green beans. You can use any other vegetable, like you know, baby carrots or you know, turnips, something tiny, small. It adds to the presentation, you know, a little nicer. You want to add some color to it. Okay. Well, this uh, smells really good. I just want to stick my spoon in there and start tasting the sauce. Over here, I have my onions and my uh, crispy bacon over here, as you can see, my mushrooms. So we're going to, you know, add this back to the sauce at the end to uh, serve the dish with them. As you can see, it's really, you know, if you take care of your cooking area, it doesn't really make a big mess. You know, sometimes if you don't dry the chicken good enough, it might have too much moisture, so it's going to splatter everywhere. But it, it, it does a little bit. But, you know, like I said before, you want to put a lid on the, the pan, kind of do it halfway when you're browning the chicken. At this point, you can put the lid all the way because, you know, we're just boiling the, the, uh, the sauce to pretty much reduce it and cooking the chicken all the way. My potatoes are almost done over here too. I tried to time them so they would be done at the same time and I think it's gonna work. As you can see the chicken is turning kind of, you know, pinkish, reddish. And that's normal because of the wine. That's what it's gonna look like when it comes out. If you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. I really like when you guys ask questions and uh, make me do some, some work back here besides cooking. As you can see, this, the liquid's reducing down. But I want to keep it covered so the chicken cooks a little quicker. Usually about 20 minutes, but I want to, you know, kind of cook a little quicker. And again, like I said before, you can finish this in the oven if you, you know, doing more cooking, you got the oven on, you can, you know, throw it in the oven and maybe, you know, free a burner to do something different. So it's just, you know, here I don't have the option, so I have to finish it cooking all the way on this top top, on my induction burner. As you can see, like in the meantime, I could be doing something different. I could be making a salad. So, you know, cooking, you just, it's just basically timing yourself and kind of, you know, like this dish takes a little longer. So you would start, you know, to get this going. And then you would like be making like my potatoes or even making uh, something a dessert or a salad. So this is uh, one of those things that, you know, I always ask students to try to do at home to, you know, cook more than one dish at a time. That way you kind of get an idea what it's like to work in a, in a restaurant. I mean, it's not the same, but because when you're working in the restaurant, you might be doing 10 or, you know, six, seven, eight, eight items at a time. So the uh, time yourself is very critical. And it's something that you really, the only way to, to learn it is like by trying it. It's kind of hard to teach somebody how to, you know, time, you know, because every dish that you might be making is going to require a different time. So you have to, you know, kind of think, okay, how long is it going to take me to cook, for example, my chicken dish? And then, I mean, this is something you learn over time. It's not something you learn in the first day when you go to a restaurant. You know, every place you go, it's, it's different. They have a different menu. And, and, but again, it's something that you, you can learn. You know, don't be afraid to try even, like, do your assignments at home. 
you know, I keep telling students, try to do two assignments at a time or even three. That way you get an idea how to time yourself in the kitchen. And it's, it's so vital. You have no idea how, how much you're going to literally, you know, need it. Some, especially those of you that are going to they want to go and work in the restaurant business. This is something that you, you must, you know, get down. And to, in order to become a, a great cook and a, even a great chef, this is something you, you have to, to really get down. Time management. Okay, I'm gonna take my potatoes off here. I'm, I got them all done. I got them, you know, cut them in small pieces. Cook them in cold water style with some salt. Now I'm gonna pass them through my sieve to make some nice, nice, nice mashed potatoes. Okay. You can see this is really easy. And you're gonna end up with some really nice Silky smooth potatoes. Look at that. Well, if you got a food meal, it works even better, you know. I'm just Showing you, if you don't have a food meal, you can use a sieve like this and pass them through. Of course, it takes a little longer, but you know what? It's worth it. Mm -hmm. Turn down my heat on the chicken because it's boiling too much. I want to kind of cook slow. You can see it goes down really quick. You just need to apply a little pressure. Use a rubber spatula, flexible, and it goes works really good. I'm gonna turn my Mail con over here to get it warm. I got a little cream. Look at that, nice and smooth. I'm going to throw a little butter in here to make them nice. Make sure you always use white pepper when you make the mashed potatoes because uh, the black pepper, you know, you don't want to look little black spots, kind of looks a little, you know, not too nice. So always use black pepper, uh, excuse me, white pepper when making mashed potatoes. I'm using some little cream here. And be careful not to put too much. You don't want to get them too, too runny. As you can see, they're going to be nice and smooth. Look at that, the beautiful silky mashed potatoes. I got them, I'm gonna put them to the side over here. Cause I'm gonna get ready to start, you know, finishing off the chicken over here. As you can see, the sauce is reduced way down. The chicken is done. I'm gonna reduce a little longer. 
the way the flavor intensifies. Look at that. Okay. I'm gonna put my uh, potatoes in my pastry bag. See, they're very nice and white. Okay. okay. I'm going to put them to the side over here. Wrap them in the towel so they keep a little warm. There you go. Okay, now we got my chicken going over here. It's almost ready. some of this fat out of the top, little skin, all the little foamy stuff. cook for another couple minutes make sure it's done all the way and then we're going to take it off and plate it we have to finish the sauce here still i believe we have another question over here by one of our students go ahead sam The cream, uh, the question was, should the cream of milk be warm before I added it to the potatoes? Yes, I had it warming up back there. It was really tiny, so I had it kind of pre-warm. That's why you didn't see it took too long to get up, to warm up, but it was already hot, so it should be warm, yes. Came a little bit more fat from here. So I want to have a nice, uh, nice sauce here. You can feel when the chicken is done, like the chicken breast starts to get nice and firm. It's not like soft like they used to when it's raw. So just by feeling it. But if you want to use your thermometer, go right ahead too. You feel a little more comfortable using your thermometer. And this piece takes a little longer than they know. The leg and the tie usually take a little longer, but they're almost done too. So I'm going to reduce this a little more. I want to taste this, make sure it has enough seasonings. Oh yeah, tastes great. You're really, you're really gonna enjoy this dish at home. Okay, now I'm gonna be mixing some of my uh, butter with some of this flour to make a roux. Okay. 
This is going to make a really nice, smooth sauce. Make sure that the butter is nice and soft. You can see this is very nice and soft. You can mix it in really good. When it's, you know, cold, too lumpy, it doesn't blend in really well with the flour. So take it out half an hour before you're going to start cooking it. Set it on the stove top to, you know, warm up a little bit. And make sure you use the same amount of flour to, to butter. I'm using one and a half ounce of flour to one and a half ounce of butter, so that way it's, the ratio is even. Oh, it got a little too soft. Look at this. It's melting my fingers. Put my hands off over here. Okay, now. My uh, spices out of there. I'm gonna thicken up the sauce. And be careful not to put too much. You want to kind of put a little bit at a time, and then let it incorporate the sauce. You don't want to end up with a very thick gravy. You should have a nice consistency. The bacon so nice and crisp. I'm gonna play our dish next. Okay. Okay. Now before we uh, finish this, I'm gonna strain the sauce a little bit. I'm gonna put this to the side because I wanna start plating my dish real quick while the chicken is nice and hot. Okay. I'm gonna strain this. Some of the sauce, not all of it, because there's some little, you know, sediments in the bottom. You want to have a nice, nice, nice smooth sauce at the end. Okay. All right, here we go. Now that I got everything to the side, I'm going to get my dish. I'm going to plate my coca van. Okay. There we go. I got my mashed potatoes over here wrapped up. See how nice and white they are? Now I'm going to put my chicken around it. some of my onions around this. Along with the mushrooms. Some of the bacon. I'm gonna pour the sauce on top because you know the way it's nice and hot. Look at that. It's 
beautiful dish. Okay, that should be good enough. Now I'm going to pour this nice, beautiful sauce over the top. Wonderful. See how easy it was? I'm just gonna throw a little green beans that look just for garnishes. Look at that. And then a little sprig of thyme on top to top it off. And there you go. See how easy it was? You got a nice coca van, chicken cooking the wine. And I hope you guys enjoy the segment. I'm really looking forward for next week. I'm making a nice, uh, I think I'm making a watermelon feta salad for, you know, celebrating 4th of July that's coming along. So hope you guys enjoy today's show. And if you guys don't have any questions, I would like to wrap it up. And thank you for being here this morning again. Have a nice day.